name is Stephen Elias, and I'm a professor in the management department here at NMSU. And uh, one of the, the main uh, goals of my fellowship was to integrate ethics into my, well, several of my classes, uh, most prominently, though, my undergraduate organizational behavior class, or Management 309, as we call it here. And what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about my experience integrating ethics into the course, uh, some of the things that went well, some of the things that went poorly, some of the uh, speed bumps that occurred along the way, and then some of the positive outcomes that I think uh, make it all beyond well worth integrating ethics into your course. Uh, the one thing I'll start by saying, though, and I imagine most people here would agree with this if, if you don't feel free to speak up, but you do not need to be an ethicist to incorporate ethics into your course material. And I think uh, it, would, it would take more than five fingers to me, for me to count the number of people who said, how are you going to incorporate ethics into your course? What do you know about ethics? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, at the end of the day, you do not need to be an ethicist in order to incorporate uh, ethics in your coursework. And I would say to pass this on to the naysayers because uh, I did talk to faculty and I did talk to even students, especially doctoral students, who are prepping their first courses. And when you tell them the expectation is that you're going to start covering this information in your courses, they, they think they're going to be overwhelmed because it's information or, or background they don't have. And that's, that's far from the case. It's not, necessar not necessarily the case. What is important, though, is I think you, to do it, you, you need to have a foundation that you can rely on and a foundation that you feel comfortable with. And uh, I, I won't use the word steel. We've, we've frowned upon the word steel. So many of us abscond with things like <laughs> syllabi, slides, whatever the case may be. I, I, I think you can look at someone's materials to get a feel for how you can do things, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a major background in ethics, you need to do what's going to be comfortable for you. So if you borrow someone else's slides and they don't go as well in class as you would like, well, you're stuck. If it's your own stuff that you're comfortable with, you can, like, if anyone ever saw uh, Chicago with Richard Gere talking about tap dancing, if it's stuff you're comfortable with, you can make it work. So you need a foundation. And so, when I talk about my foundation, I, I highlight the fact that it's my foundation. And I, I think it's important that you find what's comfortable for you. And my foundation has three components. The first thing I did was I found a textbook for my course, and this is actually the textbook that we're going to be using in all sections of 309 now, because it does incorporate ethics into each chapter. And so, uh, had I started with a textbook that didn't incorporate ethics into each chapter, I would have had 16 chapters of material that I had to find ancillary material for to incorporate ethics. Like this, I could still incorporate other material, but if, if uh, I want to, I can use what's already there. Another resource I use that's very helpful is uh, leadershipandfocus.net. And, um, and, and Grace Ann, you mentioned American Rhetoric. I wish I had thought to put American Rhetoric in. American Rhetoric is also a great resource. Uh, leadership and Focus .net is, is uh, I believe it's called the Center for Leadership at Stanford University. And if you're an educator of any sort, uh, you can you could uh, send an email with your credentials and get free access to countless video cases. And I hate to say it, but uh, my students at least tend to come to class more prepared after watching a video case than reading a case. <laughs> uh, and, and we'll watch them in class sometimes as well. And then the third resource is YouTube. And you're probably thinking, why YouTube? And it's not just because uh, it's easily accessible in any smart room. The fact of the matter is, uh, and I, I did this last night out of curiosity, I put Bill Daniels into YouTube. And there are, it, on the first page alone, there's probably 10 videos that are just dedicated to Bill Daniels and Bill Daniels' life. At the bottom of the first page is a video of OC giving a talk. Uh, so you could use YouTube. I know there's other, other resources that people use as well, but YouTube has actually worked well for me uh, in the classroom. One thing that I realized was important was you have to, if you're really going to incorporate ethics and have it be a, a, 
a, a major component of your class, it has to start on day one. It's not something like leadership. You can get through half the semester and say, now we're going to shift gears and talk about leadership. You can't do that. It's got to start on day one. And what I've started doing is adding a section in my syllabus that gets at the fact that we're going to be covering ethics. Uh, most of us uh, will have course objectives listed in our syllabus. I added an understanding of business ethics as a course objective. So it's not just something we're going to talk about but it's an expectation that when you get out of this class, it's something that you will have been exposed to. Now, uh, unfortunately, most of the students that I've had uh, recently, when we start talking about ethics, will say they've never had an ethics course. Maybe one or two of them is an elective from the philosophy department or something along those lines. And so, generally what I get when I talk about the syllabus and the fact that we're going to have an emphasis on ethics is I get a lot of blank stares. They, the students cannot to um, comprehend what I'm talking about. What do you mean by business ethics? Can you teach ethics? Why are you, how are you going to teach us ethics? And so I found that when you get the blank stares of I wasn't expecting a course with ethics integrated into it, I found that a concrete example right up front makes it a whole lot easier to progress and, and to talk about ethics. So uh, the example I use on the first day of class is the Ford Pinto. And, uh, and Dr. Carruthers, you have an affinity for vintage Fords. I don't think the Pinto is one of them. I once owned a Pinto. You did? <laughs> for about six, about six You months. did, OK. Six months. <laughs> they were lousy. And you lived to tell them. But the, uh, the, I use the Pinto as an example, and, and I'll give you a, uh, in its shortest form in the classroom, this would take 15 minutes, so I'll give you the 30 second version. And in fact, uh, the photo of the Pinto I have here, actually if we were in a smart room, it's a hyperlink to a YouTube clip on, of a five minute documentary of Ford, interviewing people who were involved with, the, of, of, of Ford Pinto, interviewing people who were involved with uh, studying the problems they had with their gas tank. So a, a very brief rundown of what we talk about in class is basically the fact that Ford did a cost-benefit analysis as to whether or not they should fix the faulty equipment in the Ford. And, and most of you are probably familiar with the numbers, but at the end of the day, it would have cost $11 for Ford to retrofit gas tanks to uh, not explode upon being rear-ended. And so cost-benefit analysis was done. It would cost $137.5 million to retrofit all the cars. Doing that would save them $49.5 million in settlement money they pay to families. They figured we'd rather pay the $49.5 million in settlement fees than the $137.5 million in the retrofitting. And so that's what they decided to do. And then the question they ask students is, is this legal? There's some debate about whether or not it's legal, whether yes or no, and at the end of the day, it was legal. There were no legal, uh, at least according to, that, at that time, it was the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, it was, it was not a problem. And then the discussion, was it ethical, comes up. And then that discussion, generally that discussion lasts to the end of class. And usually in the first day of class, you go over the syllabus, you start talking about things People get antsy, they're putting their books away five minutes before the end of class. It always goes to the end of class. And it gives them a concrete example of the type of things you're going to be talking about. And, uh, and it tends to go well from there. 